Are you for real? Not the end. Altario's story may be over, but there is still more to do. Be sure to complete the Fallen Blades challenges to obtain Altario's legendary gear. Wow. Wow, that was an epic ending. And we've got one more story expansion, by the way. So, what we can take out from this story is that absolutely nothing is locked once you complete the story. You can go back to Mordor and get all of the legendary sets for, for Eltario by completing all of these missions. As far as, as the story goes, I have to say it was a little bit boring in the middle when you were jumping from region to region, recruiting orcs and having fun in those uh, side main missions. But the ending was truly epic. The struggle of Talion at the end was really good and I absolutely enjoyed the twist. Me and probably all of you guys thought when we saw the, the ending of the, of the fight with the two Nazgûl, we thought, okay, that's it. We won, we took the fortress, we beat them, and that's the end of the expansion. <laughs> no, we actually had one more epic fight, which wasn't really that epic because it was repetitive and a little stale, but I really enjoyed the twist at the end, and especially that cutscene, the memory of how Talion the, the real man Talion uh, really died uh, in the first game, along with his uh, wife and son. That was truly epic moment, and for someone who has played through both of the games completely and explored everything that's uh, available for exploration there, I really enjoyed that ending. The DLC was very worth both my time and the money, and because I did not purchase it as a standalone, I actually saved money on it because I purchased the whole expansion pass. I'm really happy that... Um, Monolith produced such a DLC with interesting characters, interesting dialogues, world cutscenes, and some weird, new, and interesting innovations. I have to admit that I was expecting a little bit less, yes, less, from the skill trees, and I was thinking that Otario will have just one or two or maybe three new abilities and everything else will be copied from Talion. However, this DLC builds immensely on top of the DLC strategy that they obtained uh, for the first game. If you remember, for example, of the Bright Lord, um, you got absolutely all of the abilities from the skill tree unlocked from the get-go from the get -go when you started the campaign for the Bright Lord DLC. And um, you actually get some of the abilities removed because the Bright Lord couldn't do some things that Talion was allowed to do in Shadow of Mordor. Here, however, all of the abilities that were Eh, I want to say removed were just uh, optional abilities and specifically for me the abilities that I almost never used. The new abilities are fun, the light was a little bit too overpowered and if you want to you can defeat anything, everything and absolutely all orcs and living things in Mordor by just using the light and just blinding them and then executing them. The captain variety was fun, at least throughout the main story. Uh, it was nice to see so many legendary opponents as opposed to the main game where finding a, or building a legendary orc took tons of time wiping and restarting to make an orc legendary. Uh, the legendary sets here are a lot more fun and it's interesting to mention that in the Nemesis difficulty of which I played through the DLC, uh, you absolutely don't need any of these legendary sets or any other gear as a matter of fact because I was able to very easily complete absolutely all of the main missions and some of the side missions in the first live stream yesterday only using these abilities that you see unlocked I didn't even uh, unlock all of the abilities and here is my gear level 30 level 30 level 30 30 25 this one I did not upgrade because I couldn't kill an enemy during elven rage I don't know why actually I think I killed and, oh no, I was fighting a captain or a war chief during that one elven rage that I used. I'm not really good at building uh, the rat, so I'm not really good at using elven rage often. Maybe that's a weak side of mine. And as you can see, after obtaining the first three pieces of the Beast Hunter legendary set, I decided to go for the main story and I have enjoyed it. Nothing is lost. I can go back and finish all of these things. There are plenty of things that I'm not certain how they are going to work. As I return back to the normal game, I do know that I will be allowed to play with the skin of Eltario in the core game instead of Talion. But... Does that mean that <laughs> so much violence? Yes, Volk. Uh, yes, uh, Jim. Thank you. I love violence. This game is 18 plus naturally, so violence is allowed and encouraged. Uh, what I don't know to continue my thought from a moment ago is uh, 
whether you spawn as Altario herself with her own legendary sets and her abilities. Otherwise, it would be kind of pointless to work for all of that gear if you can't really transfer everything. We already know that you can transfer the orcs that you have just recruited, like the architect and uh, all of the other cool guys. Uh, you'll be able to uh, take them out to the core game and they will be joining you in your garrison. So you'll be able to extract and deploy them. They're all legendary and I'm not really certain what level they would be because here they're level 30-ish and in the core game they're expected to be level 60 because that's the level cap. Thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed the video.